Okay everyone, I just wanted to give you a, a quick introduction to how to use the MIC-1 simulator. Uh, this is part of Laboratory 2 for the architecture course, um, but it can also be utilized in other assignments. Um, so it's probably good to understand how to download the tool, get it started, um, to understand your way around this, the program itself. So when you go in for the Lab 2 assignment, you'll scroll down to the bottom you'll see that there's an archive attached to this um, so just click on that it's going to download it tell it to open when done and somewhere on my system a window will pop up you'll have inside of the archive you can just click on that extract all uh, pick a location that you want I'll just use the default downloads directory for now um, back out once you've done that to get outside the archive file go into the MIC1 folder um, and you'll notice that there's a few directories the bin directory where the executables are held a documentation directory where there are some um, jar files that are Java programs that have documentation in them uh, some examples of the uh, MIC1 uh, um, um, instruction codes the ISA um, instructions are architecture uh, programs. Um, the MIC1 uses the integer Java virtual machine uh, implementation which is just a simplified version of JVM instructions using integer only um, arithmetic. Um, obviously there's a lib directory and source directory with source code and support libraries and everything as well. Right? So if you go into the to the bin directory uh, there's a low and high res version of the, um, of the MIC1 computer um, low res for below 1280 by 960 ish screens, high res above, again 4 8K displays. You're going to have to probably do fonts, um, um, you know, text type uh, adjustments within the settings application of your operating system. Double click it, provided you have a Java runtime installed, it should just load. Indeed it does. So um, I'm going to bring that over here. Um, it looks a little intimidating at first, all right? Um, I realize this MIC-1 isn't introduced until Chapter 4 of your book. I want to try to get down into how the individual instructions and an instruction set architecture is implemented. Um, and there, and it talks about, it talk, and it talks about the full um, um, fetch, decode, and execute CPU cycle, right, and, and the parts of it. And and it's okay. You don't worry about about not about not understanding everything here yet. We'll get to that eventually, but stepping up from the simple computer simulator, um, this is sort of um, writing um, programs in that same sort of vein, um, but with some differences, with some extra instructions that are supported with the use of a stack-based machine. So it shows us um, a little bit uh, greater sophistication in, in terms of how a simulated computer can be uh, implemented. Um, and so that's sort of the point of that initial lab and any other exercises based on it. So on the left panel here, you have basically the processor itself and, 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 and the buses that feed the components of, of the processor, the, the ALU, the shifter, register, and then obviously the, the other bus that goes back and um, feeds the individual registers. These are registers that you cannot get access to. These are part of the... Um, ISA uh, and only the micro um, and the micro instructions, the micro program has access to these instructions. All right, and, and what are they? Uh, memory address register, memory uh, a data register, right? Uh, the program counter, uh, memory branch register, stack pointer, uh, the local um, variable area, um, basically the start of any uh, local area stack frame for a given procedure. Um, Obviously, the constant pointer, um, and there's a few others here that I won't get into, but, and they're really not pertinent to what we're doing. There's an A bus, a B bus, and a C bus, right? And A and B buses uh, help to feed into the ALU, and obviously C buses help with getting data back into the uh, into the registers themselves. All right, so some registers you can read from, not all of them. Some registers you can write to, but not all. Um, so on and so forth. And the values that I see here versus the values that you see over here, don't worry too much about them right now in terms of, um, of being able to understand what's going on here. 
um, they're obviously offset, right? Um, certain registers are word-based, like the MAR, MDR, uh, and, and so uh, are word-based. Uh, some like the program counter are byte-based. So that's why you're going to see things jump around in units in some in some of these registers, like the stack point. And yes, there is a preferences, and we can go here to edit our preferences and change where we start our stack base and where we change our um, our method area base and so on and so forth. And um, don't worry too much. Don't change the values in here unless you know what you're doing. Um, as your other areas, there's there is a there is a method area here. So when we go to load our um, integer Java assembly source code files, um, they'll kind of pop, they'll be loaded, assembled, and they'll render here. There's a constant pool here, and because it's a stack-based machine, we put our, um, our our variable data and our you know our our operands, our results of intermediate calculations, all that sort of stuff into here. And the stack grows upward, right? So you know, last in, first out structure, right? Um, and it grows upwards through the memory addresses, so it kind of just grows down to the right, even though it's kind of growing upward you know, conceptually. So it is upwards, it just, in the program, looks like it's, you know, going downwards in columns, right, because the addresses increase. All right, at, uh, you have a blue box here that is, allows you to work at the subclock clock, uh, the IJVM, or the program level. So instruction by instruction would be the J IJVM. Program would be just run it through at full speed. You can add a delay. I think the delays are configured based on the preferences here, screen. So there's that. Um, there's a reset button. There's this um, step backward button. There's a sort of go button, go forward button. Um, depends on the, the speed setting you have, depending on how much go is go. So, and then down here are basically parts that are in the microprogram um, store control. So don't worry about those right now. Um, so we go to file. We say uh, assemble and load a jazz file. And we go up to the directory, go to the examples. There's a sample program inside of the jazz uh, IJVM directory. We can get this test program loaded. It'll say that the assembly is complete. And what this should do is it should from the it'll print through all the characters of the um, uh, uh, common ASCII characters, right? It'll start from space, um, hex 20 or whatever that is, right? Yeah, and it's just going to go all the way through to um, to the end, right? 32 to 126 decimal. So load it once it's done assembling, and you can kind of see the instructions here, and then you can just tell it to actually. Oh no, it doesn't. This one. This one just goes through and, and, and prints an OK in the output console. There's another example um, called ASCII that you can load that that will actually go through and print out the characters. It's a different program. That's why someone saw it loading and it was like, oh, that's not it. So let's go ahead and we'll click the Go button at the speed of the program. And you'll notice it prints an OK button or an OK text in the output console screen down here and you know it, everything is good. In other words, basically the micro code store up here has the right, um, basically, microprogram installed, right? So the mic one IJVM dot mic one is really the file you want to make sure it's in there, right? There's other ones you could load for various reasons. That's one you need, and if you see this OK, it's obviously running with the correct ISA. So, and obviously interpreting those instructions for the ISA pro appropriately. Okay, and I think uh, that will do it for our initial look. Um, like I said, you can play around. I think I tell you in the uh, initial lab to go through like the ASCII one, right? You can load that. You can tell it to, ah, you need to reset after you load it. And then you can let that go through. And in that case, it goes through and prints all the characters, right? I tell you go through it instruction by instruction. You kind of get a, a different, get a feel for things. But, um, but yeah. And, uh, and I think that'll do it for now.